Valentine's Day is coming up. You know what that means? Time to get a gift. There's no more traditional gift for Valentine's Day than underwear. If you've got a boyfriend, the sheath underwear come with a little pouch that carries his boys around and not only gives him an incredible amount of support, but also gives a nice dick print, if you know what I'm saying. The ladies appreciate it. The men appreciate it. Everybody appreciates it. And if your significant other is a female, well, guess what? They have female underwear as well, and it's super soft to the touch. You're going to have this internal struggle in your head about whether or not you want to even take it off of her. Go to sheathunderwear.com, use my promo code RRBG, and save 20%. It's a win-win for everyone. And guess what? I know what you're saying. Oh, I'm single on Valentine's Day. Well, get yourself some sheath underwear, and you'll never be single again. What's up, everyone? I'm here with Jeff Cobb. How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. No problem. You're out in Japan right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, having some fun. Getting ready to uh, go on tour soon. So, yeah, just killing some time. How are, the, how are the restrictions over there for flying? I mean, I, I would imagine it's a pain in the ass with the quarantining and everything. Yeah, uh, so... They're only letting residents in. Uh, we have residence cards with the uh, New Japan. Nice. So uh, we come in, we quarantine for a little bit, and then then it's back to normal. Uh, pretty much just, you know, just wear a mask and try to social distance as much as possible. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and when did you uh, make the official move over there? Because I know you were in L.A. for a while, right? Uh, no, I, I just come here over. Because uh, be, it's easier to get a residence card for us because we're always in and out um like we're in and out for tours like we well before the pandemic uh, we would come in for like uh like a week or two or three sometimes a month and then go home and then come back it's just easier for us to get in and out and if you had a residence card it, that's quicker too like when we go through customs right right yeah so are you do you still have i mean did you live in la because I, I remember seeing you out here all the time i mean you were doing uh yeah I, I lived in uh i used to live in like sacramento area okay. and then and then now i i reside in like uh, las vegas vegas okay okay cool cheaper out there <laughs> yeah yeah it was much cheaper than, than la yeah. or, or sacramento for sure man yeah i mean i i you know that's where i got to to meet you uh i met you actually at one of the brewery shows that the uh, bumps and bruises that was a good times, man. I like that place. Like, uh, I took a bunch of beers home, and it's actually pretty good. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I have four cans that I haven't opened yet, just because it's cool, like, to see yourself on a beer can. But uh, I don't right, think I'm yeah. gonna that's really old. Yeah, at this point, that doesn't taste very good for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a fun time, man. I remember, you know, I, I messaged a buddy of mine who's a way bigger uh, wrestling fan than I was at at the time. Like, I was I was a fan, but I wasn't really, uh, you know, as as knowledgeable about the local scene about pwg and like mm -hmm. all, all that stuff so he was informed he's like dude you got to watch jeff cobb i'm like oh okay so i got i got really stoked on that and then you you know you, you guys tore the house down that night and then i just followed your career as you were like doing pwg or doing new japan and uh and now you're doing blood sport four this is your first blood sport right yeah um i've always uh always wanted to do it uh it's never schedules never lined up um, definitely I was trying so hard. It was a last minute decision for the one, uh, in New York during WrestleMania weekend mm -hmm. and I was trying so hard to get on that. Uh, but it's just, um, at the time I was under contract with the ring of honor and they were kind of iffy about it just because like we had a really big show at the Madison square garden, like the, like a day or two later. And they were worried about like, if I got hurt there, then mm, yeah. I've been able at the garden so and i understood where they're coming from but like i i still came i still went i still supported uh it was a great show top to bottom uh the the, the main event match was uh minoru suzuki and josh barnett and that one did not fail to deliver it whatsoever and i was like dude i wanted to i was i was up on the balcony watching and every match i was like like i was getting a little like a i was like like wincing i was like oh, I can't, I can't. oh man that's that, that should have been me it could have been me but i i get it but you know what uh good things come to those who wait and lo and behold i'm finally here yeah man hell yeah i'm, I'm excited to see the match it's uh it's on pay-per-view february 13th you're you're uh you had a match with chris dickinson yes yes yeah 
And I mean, he's got, you know, he's been on a roll with Bloodsport. He's been, uh, mm-hmm. I think he's been in all of them or at least in three of them or two or two or three of them. Um, but you know, last time he was up against John Moxley, who, you know, he's current AEW or not anymore, actually, he's not the AEW champ anymore, but he, at the time he was the AEW champion. So I was really, you know, I hit up Josh. I'm like, this is exciting, man. Cause that's going to bring more eyes to the product. You know, whoever is a fan of AEW and a fan of Mox is going to turn their eyes to see what's going on with Bloodsport. You know, and what you just said that they were worried about you getting hurt, like that, that shows you the type of show Bloodsport is. Like it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very unique thing. How, how would you compare it to, you know, everything else that you, that you've worked on or worked with? Uh, you know, it's definitely a different type of, uh, different type of the wrestling aspect of it. Uh, like there's no ropes, mm. so there's no nobody doing. Uh, what is it like little flippy things or whatnot? No, this is just straight mm. face to the mat. Uh, put my form in your face, cross your mouth, and uh, bend this one way, bend that one way. Suplex you here, suplex you here, jump, and you drop you on your head. And I definitely love that because that's what wrestling is. Like wrestling is in my opinion should be closer to that style and it's it's definitely something that i thoroughly enjoy um you know guy, there's all these guys that keep coming back to do this although it's very very grueling on the body because you can only win by a knockout or submission or, right yeah or you can't continue anymore and you know like that's that's not good for you know, <laughs> for your health thing you want to do every day but if you look at the roster of people that are always like like trying to be on the shows all the time or who's on the shows multiple times like there's a reason why and it's it's definitely the style it's the competitiveness and it's great i love it yeah because it's a it's a fusion of of mma and pro wrestling uh you know and and shoot style or uh, you know strong style however you want to call it uh but that always has been way more appealing to me than, than the stuff that you see on, on TV most of the time, because like you said, the flippy stuff, that, that stuff is cool. It's cool athletics, uh, to, you know, it's entertainment to like see somebody do some crazy, you know, athletic feats, but, uh, it makes it seem a little more phony. You know what I mean? It makes it like, Oh, it's a little more choreographed. Like these dudes are waiting around. There's dudes waiting outside for you to do your, or flip off the ropes you know <laughs> it's it doesn't feel like a real competition that it, it makes you it breaks that uh the suspension of disbelief or whatever yeah like i mean and 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 no disrespect to the guys that do that stuff but like yeah. for me that's just not my cup of tea man like i like when i'm in there i'm gonna throw your ass around the ring um i'm gonna grind like you know because i'm amateur wrestling background we're supposed to be grinding the guy down we're supposed to break the man down until he can't go anymore and that's that's the style i love and that's what i like i like to do and, yeah and then it's and it's i'm happy that that's getting showcased on on something as big as josh barnett's blood sport man it's yeah. it's, a, it's a platform for sure, and I, I love that it's getting more and more attention every time. There's a new blood sport; more eyes are turning to it. Uh, you know, and even you look at what WWE tried to do; they're they're trying to mimic some of it. You know, like, they're doing that underground shit that they that didn't last very long uh, for them. Uh, but, but you know, it, it shows that there is potential there. That if they're willing to take a shot at it, you know. And and also they're bringing in a couple of talented guys. And I, I know that one of Barnett's dudes, uh, Timothy Thatcher, is is over there now, and he's doing fight pits and whatnot, and trying to make it look uh, as, as shoot as possible with for what they do, which is a different thing than what they do in New Japan or what they or or what Josh is doing with Bloodsport. Yeah, I mean it's definitely like you know like when done right, it's it's beautiful because that's again that's what wrestling is like. I mean, when you look back to the early days of professional wrestling, like it, like you know, flippy stuff wasn't really around too much, and it's—I mean, it slowly got introduced to it. But like the nitty gritty is wrestling, and, and and it's beautiful, and it's a beautiful sport, man. And there's nothing like it, man. Yeah, no, I, I hear you, man. I hear you, and I've you know, I've once I started going to local shows, I started going to PWG and started going to PCW Ultra, and seeing the different aspects of it then i started really like 
because you know as a as a kid i grew up watching the, the old school you know wwe stuff and wcw and you know it was cool but it was mostly about the characters it, i never really looked at it as a sport type of thing it was mostly like oh the macho man or the snake guy and it's like okay that's cool but once I started going to the local shows and seeing the physicality and how, how crazy it can get. And uh, I, I don't know, I just started really appreciating the grind that goes into it, the discipline, you know, the, 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 the trust also that, that the two competitors have with each other, because you have to trust each other to not kill each other. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to die in the ring. I mean, although I try sometimes. <laughs> And you, even yourself, I know you're not a flippy type of guy, but you, you're definitely athletic. You know, I've seen some of your matches. You, you, you get around, you know, for a big guy, you get around quick. I mean, I, I definitely uh, attest that to my amateur wrestling background. Um, again, you know, like amateur wrestling is, I mean, I consider it the toughest sport on earth. Because, um, I mean, if like, you look at UFC too, like a lot of the guys that are excelling, our former amateur wrestlers, you know, and that's, it's a great base to have even transitioning to like pro like professional wrestling. And, um, I think it definitely, I definitely have an advantage going into blood sport because of that, because of that background. So, and it's, it's, it's great, man. And, and yeah, it also transitioned great to like when I have to do uh, a quick movement or something and, and once in a while I'll do a little flip here and there, but that's just to, to show off to the crowd a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's an impressive feat to see uh, someone of your size, you know, do a flip. I mean, it, it, it's more impressive than like a smaller dude, like a 150 pounder. You know, we expect that. But hey, nobody expects it when you're flying around. Like if you do a move, it's like, whoa. And like you were saying, the, the amateur wrestling background really does grind you. It makes you, it like sharpens you and it makes you tough. Because there's just, it's that constant, you know, grinding chess match, like pushing forward and, and getting pushed back and, uh, I, I don't know. It's, I, I really admire everybody that does that for a living just because it's such a, it's a grind. It's a grind. I, I, it's like construction worker that's out there every day, fucking shoveling. It's that same similar type of grind. You're out there working as hard as you physically possibly can. Uh, right. you have an Olympic background. You were in the Olympics, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and has that, has that been something that you've wanted to go back to at one point? I mean, I don't even know if they're still doing the Olympics with the pandemic, but um, I mean, as far as I know, they're still like they're talking about like uh, I heard I read an article about the uh, basketball uh, that's supposed to start like in I'll say like July for the Olympic Games in here in Tokyo. So, I mean, okay. I, they're going to do it. I, I haven't heard anything different here. So, well, if it's in Japan, I mean, they had Wrestle Kingdom, which you were a part of, um, you know, with a crowd. So, right. They're definitely back into the full swing of, of reality. I mean, have you yeah. kept up with that? You know, being out there now, since you're signed with New Japan, uh, you're spending more time out there. Uh, have you been watching what's going on with the lockdowns? Like here in L.A., we, we don't have shows anymore. Uh, there's no live local shows. Uh, yeah, I mean, because when the pandemic struck, like we like I, like we couldn't come over to Japan. Like we were, we were stuck at home for about six months. And, um, and we, you know, we just keep in contact with the office and whatnot. And they'll let us know what's going on here and there. Um, and then we, like, they did uh, the New Japan Cup last year with no fans. Mm -hmm. And then and they did another tour with no fans. And then they slowly, like, because they did, they did it great. Like the, um, the lockdown, like, like Japan was, was really good about, you know, when Japan was like, hey, wear a mask. Everybody wear a mask. Hey, stay at home. Everybody stayed at home. And they did it. They did it great to where now, like, it's not back to where it's normal, but there's a sense of normalcy here where, like, prime example, like the like Wrestle Kingdom, we have 13,000 each night. And that's more than anything that any of the companies in America has had, like, in this year. So, you know, they're doing something right here and, you know, they're following the rules or washing their hands, washing their, like, washing their hands, washing their asses and all that stuff. So <laughs> they're, they're doing it right. And um, yeah, like, I mean, it, to see the progression from no fans to like 
20% capacity to 40% capacity, 50% capacity to 13,000 in, in one night. It's, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. And, and I hope they're going in the right direction and, you know, like, and hopefully like we can kind of get back to normal pretty soon. Yeah, it's a lot to do with the culture too, man. I mean, I know uh, Japanese culture is known to be very respectful uh, about, uh, you know, for other people. Like one of the big things that we're talking about at the World Cup last time was how the, the Japanese fans were cleaning up after themselves in the in the stadium. It's like, you know, they, they care about other people, whereas in America, it's a little more selfish. People, you know, they want, they're like, I need to party. <laughs> when can I yeah. get out of my house? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if we just... Uh, you know, just hunker down for a little bit, you know, like I'd rather do one month than one year. And it seems like that's what we're on right now. You know, so yeah, we're almost at a whole year. I mean, one more month, it's a whole year of lockdown, no shows, no nothing. And for me, I'm a, I'm a big music fan. I, you know, I, uh, and wrestling. So I was either at a wrestling show or at a music show and it's been a full year of just being at home. It's kind of rough, man. Yeah, it, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, you know, we're, we're adapting. You know, everybody's trying to adapt to the best they can, and yeah. and then, man, hopefully we get back to normal because, like, you know, like us as professional wrestlers, we love the 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 feel of the live crowd, man, and and you know, especially it's it's anywhere too. Like even at a concert, you know, what I'm saying, like, yeah, I mean, you watch the you know, watch like a little concert on TV. Like I remember there was a couple guys that. I can't remember who at the top of my head, but they were doing like a little, like couple concert specials or something with like no fans or whatever, and, or a couple fans here and there. I was like, yeah, it's not the same, man. God, man. All those live but, streams are, they're cool if you put a lot of production value into it, but at the same time, it's not the same as being. Yeah, like, yeah, just being there and just, you know, just like feeling off of the, you're the guy next to you who's rocking out to a song or something. It's just, there's nothing like that, you know, or being at a show and you're just like, think fuck yeah kick his ass and then the <laughs> other guy hey man i like that other guy you know so there's nothing like a live audience yeah no and and you know pro wrestling that was one thing i talked to josh i had him on the show not to like uh before the i think blood sport three and we were talking about that specifically how you know in his in the blood sport world the audience isn't that important i mean it's still important but you know it's more about the the combat and the, and the, the contest but like with New Japan or or an AEW or a WWE or something like that, like the audience is such a big, big part of it. You know, they're the they're the ones cheering on, uh, and and me as a as a fan, I I enjoy listening to the crowd reaction. You know, when there's a, a nice you know something happens in the ring that's impressive, and you hear the crowd kind of gasp. That's it adds a whole new element to the experience. Oh, de definitely, and you know it makes you perf it makes you wrestle a lot harder, um, like. Is there's times like it, like I mean the that Wrestle Kingdom match I had a couple of weeks ago with Shingo Takagi, man, like that was like I felt that for a couple of days, but <laughs> like the fans that were in attendance, like you could hear them gasping and like cheering, although they're not supposed to cheer, but they were they were totally into that match, and it definitely helped me get through the match, although I didn't win, but it, you know, you know, it just felt it was an awesome feeling, and then you know, I my. I felt I felt it like a couple like a couple days after, like on a plane ride home, did you know, a thirteen hour plane ride home didn't feel great yeah. being in there. But at that moment, in the, in that moment with the fans, you know, it definitely it was awesome. Well, it gives you also, I'm guessing, like kind of that adrenaline rush where you don't really feel the hits as much until later, you know, like you oh, said, yeah, like yeah. on the flight home or whatever. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah. um Working in New Japan, I mean, you're working with some of the most talented uh, professional wrestlers in the business uh, compared to, you know, some other like local, you know, organizations that you were a part of or even like bigger ones. Because, I mean, you made an appearance on AEW, uh, you know, for a minute there. I thought that that was going to be, you know, your your next career move. But, you know, I guess the pandemic happened and, and, and also just contracts and everything uh, how did that all pan out for you? I mean, are, is the door still open for you to do that, you know, later on? Um, I mean, as of right now, like I'm contracted with New Japan and I'm very happy where I'm at. Um, you know, I, I, I like to look at like where I think I would fit in better. And I feel like, you know, I'm, my style would feel would fit in so much better at a New Japan uh, setting. Um, 
you know, if, if, we're, if we go, you know, I don't know what, I don't deal with the office stuff. Like, so I don't know, like if we're doing anything like, cause I, uh, Kenta showed up. Uh, right. Yeah. They're, they're working together. I think a little bit, there's something going on, you know? Yeah. I mean, cause uh, as, I mean, as far as I know, we still, we still have a good relationship with the ring of honor and um, we have like, you know, we, we do a little bit with impact as well as like our USA tapings. We have a couple of impact guys on our show as well. So, I mean, I mean, as long as Eagles don't get in the way, you know, we, we can make some, we can make some beautiful money. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very interesting watching what's going on. I mean, do you watch the products at all that, that are out there to, or are you just um, focus on training and whatnot? Yeah. Um, I mean, I see like bits and pieces on like the internet and stuff like that. I, uh, I mean, I don't follow it religiously because I mean, there's so much content right now. Yeah. Out in the, like, WWE has like, oh God, I don't even know how many shows they have. Like, they have Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and Two Hundred Five Live, and like too NXT. many, too many shows. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's AEW, and then Ring of Honor has a show, and Impact has a show, and then you know, so it's it's a little tough to keep. But uh, I mean, I I follow to an extent, like what I see on like results and whatnot on the internet, and that definitely helps out. Like, if there's something that I want to see badly that I've read somewhere then i'm definitely i'll I'll find a way to watch it yeah i mean it, it, it's there like you said there's too many shows i can't keep up with all of them i watch uh some mlw just because i know some of the guys there um uh, i watch some of the impact for the same reason and the only wwe stuff that i watch is for that is like if, if somebody that i know is there and i'm like mm -hmm. all right i'll just support you know the, the homie uh but it's really cool to see what's going on where AEW is working with uh, people from Impact and they're working with Ring of Honor. I don't know if they're working with Ring of Honor, but definitely Impact and definitely New Japan. And it's kind of cool to see that intermingling, whereas, you know, for years it, it was always the competition, you know, and, and nobody wanted to do that. It was, oh, we have our own thing when you have your own thing. Uh, I think that uh, I would love to see more of that intermingling, you know. I, it would be cool to see certain talent hit blood sport that I, that I, you know, I would love to see like you versus somebody from like, like a, let's say a Cesaro, who's somebody that I, I, I know he's like a big star over there at WWE, but he also can throw down. Like that's a, that's, that's a real athlete right there. You know what I mean? I'd love to see both of you guys in like a blood, blood sport type scenario. Yeah. I mean, you know, you never know what's with in wrestling. You always say you never say never. So that's true. That's true. Um, I wanted to ask you, man, you, you've been, uh, you're, you know, physically, you've been uh, getting in better shape. You're, you, you're, you know, you're more muscular. You're, you're in like, you're trimming down. Like, is there something in your diet that you changed uh, that, that you could share that maybe, you know, somebody that's looking to get into that kind of shape is you're a bigger um, guy, but you're, you're muscular, you know? Yeah. Like I had a, a nagging injury that was bugging me for a while. Like my, my shoulder was bugging me for a while. So it definitely hindered what I could do in the weight room wise. Like I couldn't do like, cause I, I used to love doing like, um, like Olympic lifts and whatnot, mm. but then my shoulder bugging me a lot to where like, like it would hurt to do them. Um, eventually I kind of got over it and I did a couple of stem cell treatments and it's been great, doing great right now. Like it's feeling, feeling good. So uh, definitely stepped up the training aspect of it. Um, being in Vegas, the fight capital of the world, uh, started training out there with um, with Tom Lawler nice. um, yeah so I mean we keep it professional where like you know if we if we wrestle at blood sport or something like there's no hard feelings when we come to the gym because it's just straight learning and whatnot and there's, there's a respect about the gym and training and learning and stuff like that so yeah uh, definitely putting that uh, with a little bit of amateur wrestling back into my training regimen has helped helped out a lot. Have you considered doing MMA? Have you thought about oh. like going? No. No. Hello. Um, it was huge. Like when I was a, uh, I guess like a junior or senior in high school, it was starting to take off really big. Like like the UFC all over the world, and and like in our area, especially too, like uh, like Hawaii and Guam area, like like MMA was huge. Like they would do sh like fights. Uh, 
couple months and it was always sold out like there's like twenty thousand people all the time and you know i, I got a couple offers but i'm like nah, it's just not me like like i'm an amateur wrestler first and foremost like never trained uh like boxing or muay thai or anything like that so i'm like no nah, definitely didn't want to yeah because like you know at the end of the day it takes a special breed to get punched in the face and then you know yeah. want more like, <laughs> I always say like I have a face for a uh, face for this is my money maker. Right. And obviously it hasn't made me that much money yet. So, <laughs> but I don't want to risk anything else happening yeah. to it. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you're getting elbows, you're getting cut up. You're, you know, it, it's, it's not a, it's not a good thing. Uh, like you said, it takes a special breed of animal to just want more, more and more of that, you know, and, and it's, it's, but there is that kind of um, connection with MMA and pro wrestling. Like you see, like you were mentioning Tom Lawler, like he used to be MMA full time. Now he's a pro wrestler. So, I mean, I always, I always uh, admire those that, that can make the transition. There's some that tried to make the transition the other way around. It didn't really work out. Uh, <laughs> um, not going to yeah. throw anybody under the bus. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be in that. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, be a part of that that group so i you know saying like that's why i i just prefer not i i know i'm realistic with my things and i know i'm not like like especially with my weight like i'm not gonna like i don't know who the heavyweight champ is like i'm not i'm not about to go throw down with freaking uh like frank mir or something like that (laughs) like like six one he's got a huge ass reach i'm like like five ten and like 250 i'm like dude no that's not (laughs) And I'm not, and my days of cutting weight are over. I don't want to, I don't want to cut weight ever again. It's not yeah, that's fun. So it's so unhealthy for you. Uh, yeah. I did that for years in amateur wrestling. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of over that already. Yeah. So, so what's the, what's the future like for you? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, blood sports going to keep going. So that's something I'm sure you want to stay or keep being a part of. Um, but you know, what, what are some of your goals uh, for the next coming, you know, couple of years? How long do you plan on wrestling? Um, you know, I'm, you know, I've always told myself I don't want to wrestle until I'm like 50 or 60, like some people, and you know, more power to the guys that want to do that. Like I don't want to be, I don't want to over. I pretty much I don't want to overstay my welcome. Um, but you know, as long as I'm my body's holding up and I'm you know making money and I'm having fun, that's that's all that that's all you can ask for in wrestling. You know like people were like, yeah, it's hard to walk away from professional wrestling. It, it definitely is like, like the, the downtime we had during the pandemic, that was, that was kind of rough, you know, like, cause I'm used to traveling every weekend doing something yeah. or flying. Like, and then when my biggest thing that I did in March was, you know, go to the grocery store and fight people for toilet paper, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's not exactly how I want to, <laughs> how I want to spend my days. But I mean, eventually, like, you know, I, it's going to come to an end and, but up, up until then I'm going to keep making as much uh, ways as I can. And, you know, I, I had that big match with Shingo uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. I, I didn't, unfortunately I didn't, didn't come up on top, but you know, that just made me more hungry to, and I definitely want that championship back. Mm. Um, I, that division. I like that style of wrestling. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, in a sense, it's kind of like the blood sport, you know, like it's a lot, of, it's just beat the shit out of each other. And um, I definitely like that style. So I mean, and like you touched on, you know, as, as long as uh, if blood sports keep going, like I would, and I can make it, I'm definitely going to be there. Nice. Man. Yeah. And I mean, you know, some of the old school wrestling guys are always like, Oh, if you're not doing it to be at WrestleMania, then you're not doing it for the right reasons or blah, blah, blah. Like, that's, is that ever, a goal for you like do you do you see that as a like a like a dream to, to be at wrestlemania is that something that you, uh, you know, to? I, you know I'd, I'd be lying if i said it wasn't um in, and there's a lot of people out there that say oh you know i would never go to wwe well you know i will guarantee you that they're lying um <laughs> it, you know uh, is it the end i'll be on anymore probably not but i mean to say that you don't want to go to wwe that's that's a, I think that's a bold face lie, but I think, um, you know, I'd, like I said, you never say never. Um, 
but as of right now, I'm with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I yeah. love wrestling. And I'm able to do because of I'm with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm able to do blood sport and schedule permitting, of course. But um, you know, until until that time, you know, I'm being New Japan and blood sport through and through. Awesome. That's awesome. I'm hoping that you know I've talked to Josh about it, and I know he's kind of flirted with the idea of of creating some kind of championship at Bloodsport because I think that would be cool to to have even if it's like a not a belt that you know you 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 have a champion that you carry carries it around or whatever but like uh, they did with the with the women's tournament last time uh, where they get a trophy something like that mm-hmm. you know I think that would be kind of cool to have just to you know show your accomplishments at, at Bloodsport you know and and the, yeah. I think the bigger it gets it'll eventually get to that point they'll need to have something yeah, we got, we all need something to fight for, but as of right now, we're just fighting for bragging rights. <laughs> fighting for bragging rights. I mean, it's a good it's a good thing to have on your resume, that's for sure. Because the 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 pedigree, the type of talent that's on there, you know, Josh himself. I mean, uh, he's he's definitely turned that whole thing around. Because I, I know it started with Matt Riddle, but you know, once he took over, uh, it's it's definitely grown to a whole new level. I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Matt did as as best as he could with it, and and it was good. But then, you know, he signed with WWE, I guess, so somebody had to take over, and I, I can't think of a better person to take over than Josh. You know, yeah, like, sure. He's a former pro wrestler, former UFC fighter, you know, UFC heavyweight champion. I mean, I'm sorry, don't like, don't let him come after me about that. But, <laughs> you know, he's he's definitely qualified to run this. So yeah. I'm happy happy that he's he's he took the took the reins and ran with it now you know i i've done as much as i could to uh, in the past to promote blood sport to to non uh i guess casual fans you know what i mean Mm -hmm. how would you convince a a or or explain blood sport to someone that just watches like wwe or something like a casual fan oh man uh you're well Usually, I always tell them you're going to see way more action um, at Bloodsport. Um, you know, I guess people are, have been trained now to watch wrestling a certain way or, or whatever. Um, and you know, Bloodsport to the to the average person that's just going to see it for the first time, maybe like, well, th- this is weird. Like, you know, why are they just, you know, they're they're just laying there or whatever. Like, you have to understand. Like, it's something that is going to have to be taught to the casual audience because they're used to seeing a certain style from television wrestling. But I think um, with the popularity of uh, mixed martial arts, not just the UFC, but like, you know, like Bellator and PFL and all that, like the popularity of those is definitely training the casual audience to, to notice um, different styles and different aspects. So I think, you know, just, you know, I th- you kind of kind of tie it to like the, like the UFC because they're, they're the biggest company in the world, right? So people are like, well, if you like UFC, then you'll definitely, you'll find something on Bloodsport you'll like. And and you always, like, usually I just tell them, like, you know, it's it's just like UFC, but with the wrestling aspect of it. And they're like, oh, really cool. And then you try and check it out and they end up liking it. So, yeah, there, there's something for everybody. It's it right. just, it's crossing is you know you can find something that you'll like in everything and i think blood sport is definitely one of them yeah for sure well dude i'm gonna let you go i know you're you got a busy schedule and i know it's like the future over there you're it's monday three o'clock in the afternoon uh i'm ready to go to bed but <laughs> um uh sure. everybody everybody that's uh watching uh blood sport dot watch i believe is the website to order the pay-per-view february 13th so the day before valentine's day uh, you know, you can get your boys' day, and then the next day you take care of your girlfriend and your <laughs> or your wife or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tune in blood bloodsport dot watch. Um, dude, Jeff Cobb, thank you so much for your time, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for uh, spreading the good word of bloodsport, man. For sure, I'm hoping that uh, you know when LA opens back up and some of the local shows open back up, I can catch you uh here uh, at one of the shows. Definitely, I'll be I'll be there. Come by. I, I talk a lot, unfortunately. So, <laughs> actually, I I have I still have the one of the cans, like like you said, of your beer with you on it. You signed it for me, so I have it on the display case with all the other 
autographs, but right I appreciate on, you, man. Thank you, brother. Cheers.